Hey y'all, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna continue our scriptable cookbook series by looking at how we can use scriptable objects to replace using enums in our code. Let's check it out. All right, so what is our goal here? Our goal is to create a system where we can add types of things without having to go in and edit our code. The goal is to make something that is flexible and extendable, potentially also by non-programmers like game designers, but also I think even for programmers, it's gonna be a little bit less error prone and it's gonna save us from having to deal with these long lists of things that we have to go back and adjust and change. So what I'm talking about here is enums or enumerations. If you're not familiar with what an enum is, I made a simple example here. We're not actually gonna use this code, but what you can see is this enum damage example. And what we have are a couple of different elemental types, right? In this case, fire, water, air, and earth. And so theoretically, if we wanted to add another type, we could just go in and say, all right, let's add acid here, right? And now we've added it there, but now anywhere where we want to use that, we're gonna have to go in and kind of hard code in. If damage type equals acid, do the acid effect or whatever, right? So there's a cleaner way that we can do this using scriptable objects. So let's go ahead and just wipe this out and I'll show you what I've set up. So we'll save that. So this is our damage type script. It inherits from scriptable object and it allows us to create a damage type that is an asset that lives in our Unity project, right? So here we're adding it to the create asset menu name. And if we wanna make a new one, all we have to do is go in and say create under scriptable cookbook, a damage type asset, right? And that's gonna make one of those for us there. I'll just delete this one for now. So what we have here is on our gun, on our Raycast shooting script, I've added a field for a damage type. And currently I'm using the fire damage type. Now let's take a look at our snake here. On our snake, we have a damageable object component. And here we have an array, in this case of size one, of vulnerable damage types, right? What damage types is he gonna take extra damage from? And in this case, it's just fire. The cool thing about this is we could have multiple damage types. And of course, we could also add an invulnerable damage type if we wanted, or a reflect damage type or whatever, right? So we could do multiple things with those. But so if we go into play mode, what we'll see is that I have my fire damage type equipped. And if I shoot my snake, he's gonna die in one hit. If I go and I shoot my lizard, he's gonna take two hits to kill. Also, you'll notice that as I shoot things, we've got this little particle effect that spawns where we shot. We've got a kind of a purple laser and then a particle that spawns where we hit. Now, the reason that this works is because our snake is vulnerable to fire and our lizard is vulnerable to poison, which is our other damage type. The particles are actually assigned in the object and there's a small method in there which is what is spawning and displaying them, this spawn prefab effect method. Now, we don't need to have the method in the scriptable object, nor do we need to have the reference to the variable. In fact, just the registering and the comparing of equality would work with this, right? With no code in the class, literally just the asset that we instantiate and check equality against. So let's take a look at how that is working. So if we look in our Raycast shoot complete script, I've added that public field, right? So we can assign what type of damage is this gun dealing. And then if we look down here, we are getting a reference to our damageable object and we are calling its damage function. What I've modified here is I've just added the opportunity to pass in as an argument the damage type that we're dealing, right? So we say, okay, yep, pass in that damage type. And then down here at the bottom of this block of code where we're doing the raycast and registering the damage, I've also said on the damage type itself, call the spawn prefab effect function 
and pass in hit that point, which is a vector three, a point in space where we're gonna spawn our particles. And that is then passed into damage type here, right? We have our vector three argument spawn position, and we use that to position the particles that we hit with. So in our damage type function here, we're passing in the damage type, right? That scriptable object. And then here, we're just checking to make sure it's not null. And then we're going to loop over our array from the inspector of vulnerable damage types. And if we find one that we're vulnerable to, we are gonna apply a multiplier to the damage amount. We're gonna multiply it by two, right? Then we subtract the damage and so on, right? This is all the same. But what this helps us with is that then let's say we wanted to add a new damage type. Let's say we wanted to go ahead and add a ice damage type, for example. Now, I just all I need to do is assign a prefab effect. I'll just reuse the fire particles for now and just put that into my gun. And let's make the zombie here be vulnerable to ice. And now when we go in, we'll see that our snake takes two hits. Our lizard takes more hits because I wasn't shooting him properly. And then our zombie dies in one hit, right? So now we've added a third damage type to our game really quickly and easily and in a way that is much less, in my opinion, error prone, right? We're not gonna have to go through and modify a bunch of scripts. Our game designer could do this if they wanted to without having to go and bother the programmers, right? But even if you're working as yourself, I think that this is a pretty robust and flexible system. It, what it does is it reduces friction to testing systems, right? You might be thinking, oh, I don't wanna go through and edit all those scripts to add ice type and check for ice type, right? But now that you can do it quickly, you might just kind of play with it in a more iterative way, test out the idea, maybe it's useless, but you didn't spend a lot of time on it, right? So hopefully you guys found that interesting and useful, just a kind of a quick idea for you here, continuing our scriptable object series. If you're enjoying the series, check out the playlist. There's a bunch of content from me and also some of the talks that I mentioned by uh, Ryan Hipple and Richard Fine, right? Where this concept of using scriptable objects as enums uh, was first introduced to me and, and I think to the world, but who knows. And uh, if you're enjoying the content, please do drop a like on the video and consider subscribing. That helps me a lot to get discovered here on YouTube and to help other people to discover the content. I've got a couple more videos from the Scriptable Object series that I'll put somewhere on the screen here for you guys to check out if you wanna take a look at one of those. And as always, I really appreciate you guys spending a little bit of your precious time with me. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.